um mic check but what's in there thank uh, you muted okay all right i i was actually speaking thanks a lot all right, I want to believe everyone could hear me now. Apologies for that. I was practically speaking and I thought that uh, for some reason uh, I'd turn my microphone on. All right, so I was just trying to lay a preamble and say to people that once again, welcome to the uh, to the ADC Learn series. This is practically the third episode that we are having. And I am super excited even to be on this session today and for this for this particular financial fiscal year at Microsoft. At the Africa Development Center West, we are so much committed to how we continue to grow the tech ecosystem and we create opportunities to make this happen. During our very first edition, which we had on the 26th of August for this time, for this window, uh, we talked about how people could get into knowing, understanding and meeting us at the ADC. And following that, we had the last, uh, the second session, which happened a fortnight ago on the 9th of September. And that was an opportunity to meet one of the recruiters at the Microsoft Africa Development Center and generally beyond Microsoft, generally at Microsoft itself. And we we'll talked to us about how could we prepare to have uh, to land roles at the ADC at Microsoft generally uh, from an engineering standpoint. What are the kind of skills and competencies that we should have? What are the kind of ways or what ways can we prepare for these opportunities? And really just giving guidance to people in terms of being able to land a role at Microsoft from an engineering standpoint. And following that, I'll be just giving us a quick walkthrough into what the agenda is for today. Uh, so right after now, I'm going to hand over to Ugo, who is actually a senior so uh, software engineering manager at, at Microsoft, and is really going to be taking us for the next 25 minutes or 24 minutes to look into some of the key topics and keywords and other topics that people actually do face when it comes to uh, navigating a software engineering career or software uh, software engineering career pathway. And this would actually look into things like what kind of skills do, should a software engineer have? Are there differences between coding and software engineering? And also touching lightly into what kind of areas or specializations? What are the career opportunities? What are the challenges? What are the expectations? So it's practically also going to be more like uh, a, a conversation. And we have planned to give another 25 minutes for questions. So which means that you could drop your questions on the chat space. You could raise your hand typically the way we do. And so before I just continue, I'm going to allow the rest of my colleagues who are on the call today to quickly introduce themselves. And then we'll go back and hand over to Ugo, who is going to take us into the expat talk. So uh, if I would have the pleasure of my of the speakers and also the people on the agenda today, if you could turn your camera on and turn your microphone on just to quickly introduce yourself and then we'll go to the next uh, item on the agenda. Thank you. Okay, who wants to go first? Okay, I think we'll go. Maybe you could we'll probably just to just take over because of time. Uh, yeah, so that we can just. Mm -hmm. So right, I'm just going to hand over to you, and so we can get into the right uh, into the business of the day. The floor is yours. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, someone has their hand off. Uh, Yomi, Michael. Uh, Pavati, are you going to moderate that part? Of okay, the I'm just meeting? going to allow Yomi to turn his microphone, turn their microphone on, so we know uh, what the question is about. Mm -hmm. Yomi, I've, I've given you uh, microphone access. And you, you, we can see your hand is up. So if you are speaking, can you just speak up kindly so we get to know what you're trying to talk about? I don't. Uh, maybe it was a mistake. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for the sake of time, because we we also trying to make sure that questions we don't get interrupted with a lot of questions. We have a time allotted to questions generally, so I think we'll go. You could go right into it, and then we'll take all mm -hmm. of the questions and the reactions just after your, uh, your just after your session, so we could put some coordination around it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, 
Hi everyone, good afternoon once again. My name is Ugo Okoro. I am a software engineering manager here at Microsoft and I work in the Windows engineering organization. So that's the part of the organization that builds the Windows operating system, um, which I, I hope or I know that we all know and love. Um, so today, the topic I am going to, today's topic really is this question, um, am I coding or engineering? Um, I think it's a very interesting question and it's one that, it's also quite controversial um, if, if, if you'd agree because people have different school of thoughts or opinions about exactly what software engineering is or what it is supposed to be. Um, you would also agree that our profession, or I think the tech profession generally, as well as some other professions, like some things in healthcare, is a very opinionated space. So a lot of people have strong opinions about what is and what isn't. But to broach this conversation, I'll start by defining um, you know, what these two things are, you know, um, difference, essentially defining what coding and software engineering is. I would also use an analogy to give like uh, for people who are not, for people who are new in this space, I, I don't, yeah, for people who are new in this space, use an analogy that I think everybody would be able to relate to. Um, just to give you a better understanding of what these two things are. So if you Google coding, if you type define coding on your browser on your phone, you see that the definition, I think according to the Oxford Dictionary, is the process or activity of writing computer programs. Right. Um, what that essentially means is that for you to say that you are coding, it means you are literally typing away at a computer and telling it what to do using a programming language, any programming language really, right? And then the definition for software engineering is the application of systematic. It's important that you get this definition because in this definition, you can tell or see the difference between coding and software engineering. So software engineering is the application of a systematic, disciplined, quantifiable approach to the development, operation, and maintenance of software. So, computer, so the, you, you can see that software engineering is not just about writing code. Like there's, you have to, as a software engineer, you have to think about um, the development, which is where the coding comes in, the operation of the software, right, and the maintenance maintenance of the software, amongst other things. The analogy I would like to use to paint a little more or give a little more context as to what the differences are is I, I liken the profession or this conversation to asking if there's a difference between a construction worker and a civil engineer, right? Um, you would all agree that um, if you've seen places where they are building bridges or where they are building a house essentially not everybody who is carrying the cement and laying the blocks and whatnot or laying the steel rods can be called an engineer but they both both the civil engineer which they typically call the site manager or supervisor right and the people who are actually laying the bricks and whatnot are called construction workers right um so the the if if you look at that profession or that this example that I just gave, you'd see that a civil engineer's job is very different from that of someone who just carries the bricks or uh, mixes cement. The civil engineer has to ensure do use scientific methods to ensure that you know the 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 not the amount of cement that is being used is the proper one to ensure that the foundation that is being laid is following best practices, right? So civil engineers would, from start to finish, they, they own the process end to end, where they are defining requirements, 
um, you know, um, giving out specification measurements and whatnot. And then these construction workers, we often call them laborers. Yeah, but I don't really like that term. These construction workers then take these instructions and these requirements and specifications from the civil engineers, right? And then go to build, right? I think that that's a very good uh, analogy for the difference between someone who would call themselves a coder or a programmer. Important to note that coding and programming are interchangeable, right? Um, so the, the, the diff, like, like I was saying, um, the, the, the analogy I just gave is a, is a good way to imagine the difference between a software engineer and a coder or a, a programmer. I would go on to speak about like some of the major differences, especially around skill, right? And education required to either become a, a, a coder or become a software engineer, right? Um, to become a, a coder, one of the most important skills that you need is understanding of programming languages and coding best practices. Right. Um, however, for an engineer, you need to understand software design principles. Right. You need to have excellent communication skills, which and not just spoken, but also written and um, communication skills. A software engineer owns the development process end to end. There's something called for engineers who are on the code. There's something called SDLC. Software development life cycle. Let me see if I can share a link, um, which essentially just speaks to the entire software development life cycle from ideation to maintenance, which is the last part of it. Do they have access to the chat? Can I share stuff in the chat? Yes, yes, they have they have access to the chart. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So if you're on your computer, you can just open that link and you see, um, you know, what a software development life cycle is. Now, it's it's important to note that um, a software engineer is also a coder, but not all coders are software engineers. And this is because of these specific skills that you need to become a software engineer. Um, you know, I mentioned communication, I mentioned understanding of engineering principles and um, on the understanding of engineering principles and, you know, having a formal education in software engineering. So to become a coder, I, I, I think the, the, the barrier to entry for coding is very low because you can just go to a boot camp somewhere and learn, and you can learn multiple languages as a programmer or a coder. However, to call yourself a software engineer, there is need for some level of formal education because in that formal education, you're not just taught how to code. In fact, to be honest, most of the software engineers that I know today including myself, didn't really learn, like coding was just a very small aspect of the practice itself, right? And the easiest way to become either a coder or a software engineer is to study computer science or study computer engi engineering. Um, so computer science or engineering or software engineering in some um, institutions, right? They would actually go into the software design principles, everything from requirements, um, gathering to design to implementation to maintenance um, and documentation as well. However, for a coder, um, you could take a course on Code Academy or even Microsoft Learn. We have a very expansive library of you know courses around C sharp, C plus plus, ASP.NET. I don't know if we have, I don't remember if we have like stuff on JavaScript and some of these other languages, but Microsoft also has an expansive library, which is free as well, of resources that you can use to learn how to code, right? So where we're teaching you um, information, about, we're, we're teaching you the details of 
these programming languages, the syntax, the best practices for using these languages anywhere. Um, what else? Yeah. How, 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 how much longer do I have? Oh, I've, I've taken a lot of time. Yeah. Um, so what else do I want to say? The, it's important to note that while these differences exist, um, what we should all aim for, either a, either if you want, to, whether you want to become a software engineer or a coder, is the ability to add value. Because people in these roles, um, the value in the, the the importance of the role is how much value you can add either to an organization or to a team, um, or to any team that you work with or you belong to. Um, I don't. I think. I can stop here um, and then take questions because I, I want this to be very in interactive and I feel like I'll be able to give more color when I start getting, you know, questions about the differences or the similarities between these um, topics. I also want to point out that I don't introduce myself as a coder. I'm a software engineer. Because I don't just write. In fact, coding, I don't even enjoy coding as much as the other parts of software engineering. So, yes, thank you. Awesome. And thanks a lot, Ugo. I, I know that there'll probably be, and like I said earlier, we also wanted this to be more, I mean, interactive so that people could mm -hmm. put their questions on the chat space and also get to understand. I mean, there's a lot that you could speak to when you understand context and where people are coming from. Mm -hmm. And also their own their own uh, sort of mindsets around some of these keywords and the topics and the things that you had actually touched upon. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Miami the next one minute. I see that there's there's a hand that is raised already. Uh, I think Yami probably also raised their hand again. I'm not sure if the question. Okay, the the hand is up again. So I think the best way for us to go around this would be to uh, possibly take uh, take take some of the questions that we have on the chat space. We do mm. have a number of them. I mean, some yeah. questions from the, from the Q&A window, and I think a number of questions, particularly within the chat space. Uh, okay. one, one thing, again, okay. I would probably also want to mention is uh, please feel free to share links uh, that you think might be helpful to people. Go just in case you're responding to some of these questions. I think mm -hmm. a number mm -hmm. of people might be looking for case studies and things they could link up with scenarios based on the kind of work that they do. I mean, some yeah. people might be here today. They are software engineers. They are probably within an e-commerce environment. Uh, they are probably within the FI, FSI environment. I think if there are helpful links and tips you could also share when you're responding to questions, I think that might be also be something yeah. that's very helpful. Uh, so I, I, I can hand over to Muyemi now, I mean, just to help us walk through and moderate the session on questions. If that's mm -hmm. fine, uh, please, uh, Muyemi, I can see you are ready for us. All right, so I'm just going to hand over to you and allow you to have the show with Ugo. All right, thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Babati. And um, hi, Ugo again. Um, hi, Amy. So I'll be, I'll be moderating the sessions on the questions that we have received um, mm -hmm. with regards to the, you know, the subject matter that you are dealing with. And mm -hmm. I see one or two. But also for the audience, um, also feel free to um, use the um, raise your hand, the hands, um, hands raised. Um, option and so that I can also call you out for you know potential questions that you may have. Mm -hmm. So for to the first one, um so th this is a question from Oluwa Sukomi and his question reads can you cite an example with building an application, for example, yeah. an e-commerce e app, right? Mm -hmm. uh, could you state how a software engineer would approach it as against to how a coder would approach it. Okay, yes, um, I, I see that question. So I, I assume everybody knows what an e-commerce app is, um, but just for clarity's purposes, it's essentially, if you know Jumia or Conga or Amazon, you know um, you essentially have interacted with an e-commerce app. So what I think or how I think a software engineer would approach an e-commerce application separate from how 
someone who just writes codes would do it is is at what point each individual is involved in the process of building that application or building that software so like i said software engineering is actually a scientific is the application of a scientific approach so it's not just random people you just read requirements and um you know create open up your id and start typing away right there they are, they are integral or important processes in the in the development process um where a software engineer first off would have to collect or understand the requirements analyze the space understand what e-commerce is you know understand the business needs understand who the customer is right and also essentially marry all these things together before they even start designing the software and by design, I mean identify the different entities within this space, the e-commerce e -commerce space, identify the entities, identify the relationship between these entities, you know, figure out how to abstract these entities as well as their relationships, you know, write a document. Yes, software engineering involves a lot of writing. And I don't, I don't even mean code. There's actually a lot of writing, which is why you're communicate, you're written and spoken and oral um, communication skills is very important because you have to be able to communicate these requirements to other stakeholders in the team or in the in the company right um once you have these things done then you go into the development stage that is where i think a coder is more appropriate like from once a coder has today um since the since program or product management became a thing, right? Um, it was it's usually at this point, you know, after requirements have been gathered, entities have been identified and whatnot. It's usually at this point that they then hand over these requirements to the coder. This person has no business with who the customer is, probably doesn't care um, so much about um, you know the business strategy or is essentially how this product will be shipped to the user or how the product will be maintained the only is just you've given me these requirements what we typically call a prd to the product requirement document my own is to just write the code and ship it right um that is an example that i can give right so um the difference there is you see all the different things the software engineer was involved in that the coder can be involved in, right? But typically, it isn't expected to, 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 to do those things. Like there are so many outputs of the different phases of the SDLC. Coders may not even know what an entity relationship diagram is. Coders may not know what the um, state's um, diagram is. Most people know what flowchart is, that one is general, but like there are different parts of that process that perhaps a software engineer or someone who calls themselves a software engineer is better equipped to do than someone who just writes code. Yeah. I think uh, yeah, I can move on much. to the next um, question. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that. Um... Ugo, and I think the, the take out there is, is she is better equipped to do more as mm -hmm. to, to a coder. Yeah. Um, so more questions come more questions come in here. Um, so let me take, let me flip, flip, flip. Um, so from Catherine, Catherine asks this question. She says, what are the technical skills that a software engineer have that a coder does not have? Hmm. Um, that's a very interesting question and a difficult one to answer. <laughs> I, I, I like I that I already gave the caveat that um, this space is one that is highly opinionated, right? Um, but one of the things that I would say is communication. Is Okay, she said, tech, Catherine said technical Tec skills, right? Um, technical skills, yes. Technical skills, um, I, I, I can 
I would classify requirements gathering as a technical skill because there is there are actually scientific processes to gathering requirements needed to build software, right? Um, as a software engineer in your formal education, you are actually trained to use these scientific processes, right? Um, I mentioned a number of things. Um, Catherine, I don't know if you are if you are privy to those things, entity relationship diagrams, um, data flow diagrams, user flow diagrams, state diagrams, etc. Um, they are like a plethora of things, UML diagrams, where you're modeling classes or the models within your application. Um, these skills I have found in my experience um, that some coders don't have those skills um, and some do and you find that the people who do have actually gone and sort of formalized their knowledge of the software engineering process so they don't just write code and they are typically involved in other stages of the of the software development life cycle in fact i would in an opinionated way opine that um, any coder that someone, any coder who does all these things isn't a so isn't just a coder. I, you, that person can confidently call themselves a software engineer. Um, so yes, th those are some of the technical skills um, that differentiates a software engineer from a coder. Yes. Thanks, Hugo. Catherine, it would be nice if you could just also, you know, um, put an icon or say something, you know, to, uh, as regards to the response that Hugo has given. Um, so another question here, Hugo, for you. This is from Joshua. Uh, mm -hmm. And Joshua's question here is, if I have a formal education in mathematics and a one-year learning or software engineering, Mm -hmm. Can I fit into becoming um, a software engineer? And this is, he's trying to get more of clarity from you. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, a, it's a yes and a no. Um, I would, I mean, for example, I, I studied computer sciences at the University of Lagos. Um, and of the five years, I think, we spent two years like taking a deep dive into software engineering. So remember that I said computer sciences is one of the ways you can actually just go into studying computer science is one of the ways you can go into software engineering. Um, and there are some institutions that offer software engineering standalone as a degree, right? Um, the way I would answer this question is, like I said, it's a yes and a no, because there's the part where you need experience as well. Um, if the one year of software engineering, one year of learning software engineering, um, you know, is the, the quality of what you learned is sufficient enough for you to acquire the skills required to become a software engineer, then by all means, yes, right? Unfortunately for me, if you know, if you add ASU strike and whatnot, <laughs> I couldn't learn software engineering in one year. We had to do it in like two years plus additional learnings that I had to do after after school. Um, um, but yes, again, if the quality of the content that you're learning within um, that one year period is sufficient enough to give you the skills, then I believe that you can call yourself, um, you, in fact, you are more than fit to become a software engineer. Because at the end of the day, you know, some of these things are theoretical and you need to, it becomes, you become better at it as you um, practice it and um, gain experience interacting with people, etc. Yes, I hope I was able to answer that question. 
Thanks, Hugo. And I think for, for Desmond Okeke, that same response that um, Hugo has given will do justice to your question around um, if you studied uh, mathematics with computer science as well. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a question here that says, and this is for you, Hugo, um, it mm -hmm. says um, most of the things that you have said um, I have learned. So theoretically, this individual has learned it, um, but mm -hmm. he has not practiced it, right? Mm -hmm. um, now that you're saying that it's really important that one would um, need to get his hands dirty by practicing, how can he um, practice such such skills? Uh, and and, and um, I'm, I'm assuming that this person might still be a student, um, but he's saying, how can I bring to life this skill set that I have, uh, even yeah. though I have learned it theoretically? Yeah, um, so I, I would, and that's, that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> my first answer is come to Microsoft, apply for Microsoft <laughs> internships. <laughs> we have programs where, you know, you can learn, we can teach to some extent, uh, use some of these skills. Um, but another thing that I, I, I think is important and I'm very happy that we have today because in my time, these communities didn't really exist. There are lots of communities today. Um, this one being one of them, the ADC Learn series, I'm sure that it will expand to become something a lot more interactive and whatnot. Um, you know, um, there are lots of communities out there um, they are on Twitter, they are on Instagram, they are Slack communities, Discord communities, where although most of them are coding focused, right, um, you find some that are also engineering focused. So what I would say, whether you're a student or you're transitioning into tech or, um, you know, you are a recent graduate or whatever, you know, find some of these communities, the opportunities that exist within these communities, um, and they would essentially give you, you the opportunity to, to practice. I know a lot of people say practice, practice, as if you can just sit down in your house and come up with one funny idea. Um, it's not easy. Some people can do that and build things on their own, right? But one of the benefits of these communities is, you know, um, you have other people who are also aspiring to the same things. And typically when you find yourself in such situations, you find that you have a great support um, system and then you have avenues to practice what you are learning or what you've learned. Yeah. Thanks, Hugo. Um, so the response is join communities and when you see an opportunity to apply for internship at Microsoft, give it a shot, all right? Um, this is another question from William. He says, um, beyond the BSc computer science um, degree, um, um, what, you know, outside that, what other sort of format education does, would you recommend for him to become um, a software engineer? Um. You can, I would use an example, a friend, one of my classmates from university, what is a software engineer, and he's going to, when he told me, I was like, which kind of software head is this? But anyway, he's, he's going to get a master's in applied software engineering, you know, um, which is just like an advanced level. So the, the master's, like I said, we, I studied or we studied computer sciences where we did things from networking to building operating systems to compiler construction to database design, ETC, and software engineering, right? So if you're looking for other forms of formal education, you know, where there is focus, you can get a certificate. There are some institutions that offer like diplomas in software engineering where the focus is software engineering they take you through um, one thing i didn't mention software engineers are also project managers because there's a field of software engineering that is software project management right so when you have that kind of focus they take you through these skills that i um 
mentioned. Um, I remember I was, I was on a call with a program manager on the team and I used some terms and she asked, she's like, I go, have you done PMP before? I said, no, that, this is what I, I use some terms that you typically find um, product or program managers using, right? I don't think that somebody who is just a coder may know those things, right? But like I said, look for um, programs or institutions that offer diplomas, if you don't want to do an MSc, which it will be expensive, of course, um, you know, there's there. I see Maila William asking, is there more to pursue beyond BSc in computer science? There's so much more. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> there is a lot to to pursue. But if you want to go deeper into software engineering, just find a diploma, a certificate, or a master's degree in software engineering and you'll be good to go. Thank you so much, Ugo. There is this question here from um, Marigeshi, and he says, in what category would you class the use of no-code tools that are fast becoming mm. popular? Um, to be fair, um, I wouldn't, I, I, I think that I think that no code is the classification of its own. Do you get? Um, and you, we would all agree that these no code tools are built by coders and software engineers. So, so the the whole essence of no code is to give. You know, software engineers we like Shakara. You know, I'm sorry if there are no Nigerians here. Shakara means <laughs> we like to. Um, were pompous in a in a manner of speaking because you know it's a very specialized skill. You you can have you can tell somebody you want to build a website and they may not be very um, receptive at first. So the whole essence of no code is for people who don't know what no code is is giving people the ability to build digital products without having. Um, knowledge of software engineering or coding right so it is actually software engineers that decided maybe it's like these people should stop disturbing me if you want to build something go and build it yourself right and and designed and implemented the tools that would help you do that right so you can build a website things like wordpress magento there are a plethora of tools out there, right, that you can use to actually build digital products end to end. However, no code has its limitation in that there are things that you just need this skill, these skills that I've been speaking about to execute. You can't, no code is not yet at the position where um, you can build any digital product without the need of a software engineer. So I would say it's in a category of its own. Um, it wasn't, no code isn't built for engineers or coders. It's built for anybody, really. If you have an idea in your head and you want to quickly iterate and um, push out an MVP, look for a no code tool and use it. I hope that answers that question. Thank you. Thanks, Hugo. So so no code is a standalone category. It's not a coder, nor is it software engineering. So based on our guidance from Ugo, it's a standalone. Up next to the next to the next questions, I have two similar questions. One uh, from Chiamaka and Taiwo, right? And the question mm -hmm. here says, uh, "What would you advise uh, for someone who is transitioning into software engineering, but has mm -hmm. no?" prior background in computer science. That is what. Um, for mm. Taiwo is saying um, he's just started uh, learning software, you know, engineering, and he's looking at the timelines. What, what would be that time? Does he need to study for him to become an intermediate software engineer? Mm. Mm. Um, this is a very interesting question. I'll take Chair Maka's question first. Um, so for anyone who wants to transition into software engineering um, with no background in computer science, here's what I would say, and this is a belief that I have 
generally of myself. If you have any sort of tertiary, especially a university education, believe me, you can learn anything and become anything you want to be <laughs> in this life. Like I, I am very confident that if I want to become a pilot or an aeronautic engineer tomorrow, sim just because I have a bachelor's degree, I am very sure that I will do it very well. You know, so um, that said, um, it's not good to be overly confident like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but like I said, um, one of the things I would say is you can find a, a diploma, start with a diploma or a certificate. Let me see. There are people who give this yes. There's a and there's an organization um called British Computing Society. Um they give like diplomas or certificates in IT, software engineering, etc. I'm sharing the link in the chat as well. You know, you can start with these diplomas. There are also local um, companies or platforms that offer these services as well. I've heard of ALX, I've heard of Old School, I've heard of Utiva. This is not an ad, by the way. These are just platforms that I know. Um, you know, you can, you can, you can enroll for some of their programs. Like I know that those programs are actually designed for people who don't have a background. Um, for people who don't have a background in, you know, computer sciences. And what I would advise is if you sign up for any of these programs and you finish the programs, don't stop there. If you really want to go deep into um if you really want to go deep into into software engineering you have to seek first off find a way to get an internship um you know find a way to get an internship get work experience and then further your education in the field yeah that's my advice for you um let me answer taiwo's question quickly can find it too. Okay, yeah. Is I just started learning software. How long did it take me to become an intermediate? Um again, opinionated question. You, for people who are very um who are active on social media, you'd see that there's a lot of debate about what even a senior engineer is. Right. There's also debate for what an intermediate engineer is. I think that the definition of these things are sort of dependent on the environment that you find yourself. Right. Um, as sort of dependent on the environment that you find yourself. I would even use myself for an, as an example. I used to I used to work in a company in Lagos in Yaba here, and in two years I moved from. I moved from like entry level engineer to senior engineer. Um, I mean, I know I'm I'm a star boy, Sha, but that's not the important thing here. So <laughs> there are people who would who would um, argue that uh, two years is not enough to become a senior engineer. Like, well, what have you really done? You know, stuff like that. Um, so I don't I can't give you a specific answer. What I would say is. Um, what I would say is learn this skill as you start to apply it. The, what really determines experience, what really determines intermediate, senior, or whatever, is how much quality experience you have. I've learned that it is not a matter of how long you've been in the industry. Like, I have met engineers that are just two years into their career, and I'm not even going to lie, they're they are really good. I will, some of them are even better than me, you know? Um, you know, and I've been, I mean, I've been doing this for like eight years, right? Um, so there is no, anybody that, I see a lot of these programs say, come and become a software engineer or intermediate in three months or six months. I, I can't speak, to that, to be honest, what I would say is 
learn the skills the diligently find places where you can apply them and add value those are the imp- important things like you wouldn't even need to scale yourself like you wouldn't need to level yourself as either intermediate beginner or senior like your work and your experience would speak to um what level you are appropriate for yes thanks ago uh, a quick question here from um, William, and, and he, he, William is taking this question from another angle. So he says, how much do DevOps engineers and software engineers have in common? And what do they have in contrast? So what's the difference and similarities okay. with DevOps engineers and software so, engineers? So let me, let me give another opinion, a third answer. Um, in my time, I'm not that old, by the way. I'm just saying in my time, because things have changed since when I started this career. In my time, we didn't really have all these DevOps, front-end, back-end, etc. Um, again, as a software engineer, remember what I said, is the application of a disciplined and quantifiable approach to the development, operation, and maintenance of software. DevOps literally means developer operations, right? Which typically, or development operations, which typically covers um, the parts where you are shipping code, releasing it, putting it on servers, etc, XYZ. In Microsoft, whilst these distinctions exist, as a software engineer, the expectation is that you have knowledge of all these processes. So here we don't really have any distinction of you can't you wouldn't meet and you wouldn't see I haven't seen any SWE in this company that has front end engineer in their contacts book. Everybody is a software engineer, right? And by virtue of that rule, at least within Microsoft, there's an expectation that you have an understanding of the different life cycles in software development, right? Which is, if you check that SDLC thing, you see the different processes from from, um, analysis to development to design to maintenance. So within Microsoft, there really isn't any distinction. However, outside of Microsoft, um, the, at least in places that I've worked before here, the major distinction is that a although that is even changing because DevOps is software engineering or coding and DevOps is slowly merging into what we call cloud engineering today. And some cloud engineers write code, um, you know, but DevOps proper is mostly things that happens um, after the 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 code for the software has been written you know, and you want to deploy it either to a server somewhere or you want to manage, help manage the process, you know, through which um, this code is even being deployed in the first place. That is the only distinction I can think of. But within Microsoft, there's no distinction. Yeah. Thanks, Hugo, for that. Um, Precious is asking, yeah, Mm -hmm. Precious is asking this question that if you could please go through the software engineering skill set again. I think she needs to take um, it down. Okay. Oh, is, this session is recorded. I mean, you could go back to it. But some of the things I mentioned um, were um, understanding of what a DFD is, a data flow diagram, um, a um, what's it called? Entity relationship under having the skills to develop or build out or draw um, a data flow diagram, entity relationship diagrams, UML diagrams, states diagrams, flow charts, which is common. It's not flow charts are peculiar to software engineering, but it's, it's a very important tool in representing the process through which something works. And a number of things. If you go through the chat, you'd see a link I shared for the SDLC. And you can also just Google what are the differences. Um, 
and, and another thing is software design. I think the that's the bulk of where the difference is. I don't know. Some coders design software, but software as a software engineer, your job is to design it. Like, and I don't mean the interface here. I'm talking about how the different components work together. Even identifying the components that exist within the software is part of the design. You know, when you start hearing things like um, typically we call it software architecture, right? Um, where you're designing components and how they interact with each other and whatnot. Yeah. Thank you, Ugo. I know we have five minutes more. So let me take this last question and hand over to Bhavati. And this mm -hmm. question is an, like a no brainer. Um, it's from Iro Gene. He or she is asking, can a coder get a job with Microsoft ADC? 100%. Um, 100%. Um, one of the things that I love about this company is that we are committed to also upskilling um, our employees. You know, like I said, Microsoft has an expansive learning library that is open to the public. Now imagine how much information or how much resources we have internally, right? There are courses that you can take, you know, to, to what's the word? We often use this word here, ramp up <laughs> on, on those skills. Right. Um, so yes, if 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 a coder can get a job with the ADC, all you need to do is you know understand the recruitment requirements and and whatnot. Thank you so much, um, Ugo. I know there are other questions here that speaks to um, Microsoft internship program. What is the difference between the internship program and you know? the graduate program, there are questions around, do we currently have an internship program running and all that, okay? Um, let me allow, um, hand over back to Baba T and mm -hmm. potentially there are some of those responses that he would give and potentially other um, series or sessions that will be coming, some of those questions will be answered. So thank you so much, Ugo, and back to you, Baba T. Awesome. So from time to time, I've noticed that we never get to have enough time to be able to cover questions. And this would always happen even when we think that, well, uh, we can do this within within a short space of time. Uh, so we, I, I know the appetite is there. People would always have questions to ask. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put up the screen right now, uh, the link to our meetup page. And on the meetup page, please feel free to drop, drop questions there because this chat space uh, would not be reachable immediately after this session. However, when you go to the meetup page, you could drop questions on the discussion panel and then there will probably be one or two persons within the community that will be happy to sort of respond to the questions that you might have. So I've put the link for the meetup page right on the screen. So please feel free. It's the second link, link uh, HTTPS or ak.ms forward slash ADCW-meetup. So that's the link to our meetup page. It's the community that we sort of have for people uh, within the tech ecosystem, and you're free to be a member of that community, and you could always catch up. So it's not just a place for you to get updates, but it's actually a place for you to be able to communicate and also have uh, insight into some of the things that could help you to also grow in your career, I mean, to develop your uh, your career, right? So one of the things I also wanted to touch on is there's there are questions around when is the next leap. I honestly cannot speak to that right now, but we try as much as possible to always circulate to update through uh, our Twitter page, also our LinkedIn, and drink, and also using the Meetup site, right? So we try as much as possible to make sure people have up-to-date information about these opportunities, when these opportunities are live. And recently, about two weeks ago, or last week, we still had a session for people on what their resume should look like. So we continue to make this effort, and we continue to create the opportunities for people.
people to not even just come into Microsoft. Yes, we want to come and work at Microsoft, but we also recognize that some of the kind of skills that we might need at Microsoft could also be kind of skills that could be needed at a place like Google, at a place like Meta, right? So when we try as much as possible to prepare you to land a role at Microsoft, we are not necessarily saying that this is the only best place we could you could shine, but we believe that, that by taking those opportunities to develop yourself, you could also increase your chances to be able to land a role uh, outside of Microsoft. So please keep that at, at the back of your mind. There's also the hashtag at the bottom of the screen that you could use, uh, which is for the AGC Learn series. So you could search using the hashtag. You could also write your stories, I mean, using that hashtag. And there's also the YouTube page. We try to now put the videos of sessions that we've had and also other engagements from the ADC. We try as much as possible to put those videos right there, I mean, for you to have access to them on YouTube. So I would like to say a very big thank you to Go for taking time. I know that if we had allowed you to continue, you'll probably still continue. Uh, but then again, this session is just for one hour. We'll try to always make sure that uh, we could get more time, give more time back to people. And I sort of like the way you took the uh, the dimension in which you took the, uh, the session today. You spoke for just about 16 or 15 minutes, and you were able to give back about 30 minutes or 35 to people to have uh, to ask their questions. So yes, I think I love that. And once again, thanks to Moyami, uh, thanks to Shifumi and also my other colleagues who are on the call. I would love to bring this session to a close for today. I would do hope that for subsequent question, uh, sessions, you are able to join us and you're also able to catch up on recordings. You will continue to share your questions and tell about your stories on our pages. And then you're also free to, to, to add us on LinkedIn. You can search for me. My name is Vatude Vaughan, I mentioned earlier. You could search for Ugo. Uh, some of you are probably following for me already. You could also search for for me. And so please, we are happy to also respond to questions that you might have on, on LinkedIn. And there's one thing I always say that, yes, I believe that a number of people would know this, but I'm also assuming that a good number of people might not know this. So if you are dropping a question or you're trying to reach out to us on LinkedIn, go straight to the point, just drop your question. Uh, do not keep it hello, hi, hello, hi. I mean, sometimes people don't get to be able to respond. And so try to do that as well. It would help us to also be able to engage with you further. So I think without, without any other further questions or reactions, I uh, would love to say a very a big thank you to everybody and I wish you all a good weekend, a restful weekend. And for all the people that are going for Ho and Bay and the rest, I hope you're also going to have fun and you would also enjoy your weekend. So right now I'm just gonna stop sharing. Uh once again, thank you everybody for coming, uh joining us for, for today's session. I will look forward to you joining us again uh for the next one that we're going to have in October. All right. So goodbye everybody and once again enjoy your weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Babati. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye. Cheers.